Good morning, guys. How are you? The little kitten was trying to be half inside the door and half out of the door. Here's how this is turning out so far. I went through my model box. And I have all my wheels and everything in. And I found a set of true spokes, which is not quite not quite the Dayton's I wanted to use. The real wide tires that were 13s. And I think these are probably, I'm going to have them out just a little far, just so I can kind of trap them in there. But I think that they'll look about the best. Let me see if I can move this down. Huh. There we are. Yeah, I didn't know if I was able to see it or not. I still don't really know if it's able to see it or not. Maybe get it up here. I'm not going to have them sticking out like roller skates. I don't really care for that look. But. I've got the three prong flippers, and I only have three of them. I got to find a fourth one. I'll bet it's going to be in the secrets box. But that's how they're turning out so far. The true spokes were in two separate pieces. You glue on. You glue on those outer spokes to the inner and with those wheels being like that I was able to paint gloss black on the background and then glue the front over it and I didn't need to turn the bars on the lathe because I think that they're nice and chromey looking and look great like that I don't really want them looking like they're aluminum if I was going for a set of Barannies or I heard him say maybe Barani, um, a Ferrari or something like that, or a really neat Corvette build or something. I would turn those on my on my lathe, but I think these are looking pretty good for the right scale for the right look that I'm looking for. So true spoke is the way to go. I like Dayton's better. In fact, I have a set of Dayton's in this other closet real Dayton's for my MGB that I had years ago and and I, I have them stacked up okay there we go now this was my pearl white I wanted to show I've had pearl white from House of Colors in 06 when I painted my Maverick my real Maverick and I did all the pro white. This stuff here works really good. I don't see any difference in it except for the price. I got this stuff off of, I'm thinking it was Amazon Pro X, uh, Micro Pro. The one that I got from House of Colors years ago was, uh, I think, called Silver Pearl. But it, it was pearl white. And it was a tiny little container. It was bigger around, but it was so much shorter. Let me see if I get something to, to show you guys what this looks like. I think I got this from, so I'm pretty sure it was Amazon. I got it for. I think around around ten bucks, something like that, nine dollars and something. Yeah, there it is there. Yeah, I mix it and I put it in my put it in my clear coat. So I spray my white, put a couple uh, scoops of this in my clear, then I spray it to the airbrush. And I've done pearl handles on my warthog, uh, para ordnance warthog. 
and they look absolutely stunning. It's really no different that I saw between my House of Colors Pearl White and this particular Pearl White. And this has been the cheapest I found. House of Colors one back in 06, I think, cost me $75 for, I think it was less than this. It was, it was smaller, smaller amount, I think. And for the money difference, yeah. Jacquard. Jacquard powder. So if you like to pick any of that kind of stuff up, I think that's its name right there. And like I said, I've sprayed it on my uh, handles, handle grips, and they, they look absolutely beautiful. The pair of ordnance warthog is a double stack, so the handles are very, very thin on it. And if they weren't, if they were regular 1911, I would have put, I would have made my own handles or bought some from bought some really cheap off of eBay, but yeah, I want pearl handles on it, and they just don't make anything like that for that particular one, so that pearl white works really good, and I've got a ton of it that's pretty heavy, and so I've got a whole bunch of that. Let's see, what else do I got going on? I had, where is it now? Oh, what's up here? It's up on top of my toolbox. I have it glued together. I don't have the dash in. I have it snapped in. I've clipped the clips on it low so I could snap it in. And then when I get this painted pearl white, I can snap this back out. And then I could do the detail on the, on the gauges and, and everything. And I think it even comes with a nice clear lens to go over it to make it even more accurate. But as far as the interior goes, I'm... I'm sure I'm going to be um, spraying it and then putting my flocking in there. I like to go with a nice uh, uh, cream color, like a tan, like a light tan flocking. I've got four different shades of tan. And I've got, I've got all of the, the suspension and everything done except for the shocks. I didn't put the shocks in yet. But I can. I can glue them in. But I want to get that all done, and then I want to put the wheels on it. Oh, don't tell me they don't fit. I went kind of through a big deal. Yeah. I don't think it don't really fit. I'll have to maybe drill them out a little bit. But, yeah, I like how they turned out. The 13-inch little 13 inch rims I thought for sure I had a set of 13 inch gold Dayton's in my in my model box that I've had in there for years I found one tire to that so yeah I don't have it anymore okay what else is going on I do want to get started on my on my engraving, I've got my my tools, my compass, my diamond honing stones. For different grid, I've never, I've even gotten these out for over a year. I've had them, but they're they're honing stones for honing. A engraving bit. I got everything except for the angles. There's angles to how to get the engraving bit. And that's that's where I can kind of fudge it, but yeah, I want to do some engraving. I've made an engraver. Um, I bought a hand tool, a hand engraving tool from Amazon. It was cheap. I was going to have to make my own, and I've seen videos on how to make them. But I had to make the machine to power it. 
So I use one of those El Cheapo air compressors and I changed a bunch of stuff over to where it makes the handpiece work perfect. And I've even gotten a pedal for, I think it was six bucks for the pedal to adjust the speed of it. The whole nine yards. I even made myself a jeweler's vise out of a big bowling ball that I got for free off of market, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Then I used a thumb hole to put a small little, um, not pin vise, what is that? Oh, uh, jeweler's, jeweler's vise. And I got the Lazy Susan down here, and then I made the base for that. So it spins around. It's round to hold my bowling ball. And I can hold the bowling ball at any any angle. I would like to cut the bowling ball in half and then put another Lazy Susan in there. So even that can pivot around. And that would make it kind of a Cadillac of all jeweler's vices. Um, but yeah, I've made all my own parts and everything. Except for this. I've got a cutting board, El Cheapo cutting board. But when I bought these off of off of um, Amazon to to chuck my cutting bit into it, these it didn't say what size gauge was uh, of wire. So when I got them, they're way too small, and I haven't been able to do my to do my cut up, cutting bits. Here's one of the bits right here, made out of tool steel, and it just, it uh, it kind of fits in there. But, yeah, once once I get the bit shaped the right way with the right heel on it, the heel is the most important because it allows, it doesn't allow it to go in very deep. And once I get that, put that back up there. Once I get that cutting bit done, then I'm sure that I'll do some of that engraving on here because I've, I've been excited about that for the last couple of years. I made all these parts and got the right tools and everything. Um, I got those about two years ago and was all ready to do all of it. And, and then I just kind of ran out of steam collecting all the parts. But everything was done except for the, the right cutting angles. And you can buy the gauges that I can run them on my countertop out there. They're all the right angles and stuff. But that's 350 bucks, And I can't see spending it when I know I can make it myself. They look like a house with one of these little deals in it. You cut this out of the plastic, and then you're left with your brass with your little set screws. You hot glue that in to your to your uh, cutting board so it's Teflon, and then you can run it on your counter on these nice diamond diamond blade um, blade sharpeners. And you can hone hone down your little tool as fine as you want it. The reason why I want to do all that and be engraving, I want to engrave the pair ordnance warthog, and I'll I'll do that on on here. I sanded it all the the it was black painted like um Duracoat coating on them right from the factory, and then I did a a Duracoat pixelated camo sand camp desert camo. On it, I did that back in 04, and I always wanted, and it looked cool, but I've always wanted nickel with the pearl handles. But along with that, I want some really nice, tastefully done scroll engraving. And I did some years ago on a, my Bursa that I've got, and I started on the underneath of the, of the trigger guard. And I started working with that, but it was a hand chisel that I had made and using a hammer. And I put it on a pivot on my vise. I've got a big, big, heavy cast iron vise from the 40s. I put that in there and I, I did all that. But that's just, that's not for me with doing it with a hammer by hand. I wanted to get a nice little hand piece 
which I got that, like I said, from Amazon. I think it was 40 bucks, which is pretty much outside my range of comfort of wanting to wanting to start a new project and see if I can do it. Because any other way, you'd have to start with like $3,500. And if you're not good at it, then you're, you've pretty much wasted your money. So I'm going to make all my own stuff. That way I'm not out anything if I really don't like doing it, which I'm sure I, I would. That's why I got that. And put this up a little. That's why I got this microscope to be able to mount that up above my bowling ball uh, jeweler's vise. And it spins around so nice. I've oiled that. And I should get that on and show it to you. That's pretty amazing. I've had that done now for for two years now. And it's kind of behind the scenes thing. I was using it for my turntable on here with my models. But it's so heavy duty I had to put a very heavy I had to put a very heavy deal on top of it. Now I had cut it out since I am not a carpenter. I just had to have these four screws line up. This was cut, this two by four was cut in a wedge shape for a ramp, a wheelchair ramp that I made for Tammy's dad when, when his cancer got real bad in 2013. And right before he passed away, we needed a way to get him up and down in a ramp. And I used the very end of the ramp that I'd cut with a sawzall into a taper. I had these two tapered two by fours. So I didn't need a, a square or anything to try to get them in place. I just needed to get them to line up to that. Now the bowling ball went down into here a little bit. So I carved this and a little bit of that, but it spins really nice on here. Uh, it's got the heavy duty ball bearings. This is a real heavy duty uh, lazy Susan. So I've had it made for this bowling ball for two years now. And I've used it on my channel here in the very beginning to spin my models with a heavy box on here with Moroso stickers and stuff on it. But I'm getting to the point now to where I'm really getting impatient to do my nice scroll work. And I, I want that to take off. And that will definitely be on this channel when I'm doing all that. So... So, like I said, I'm pretty excited about that. It's the first time anyone's hearing of that, I'm sure, because I, I don't normally talk about that. Okay. Can't think of too many more things. Um, I've made my, my purple people eater a little bit better. He's doing a little bit better. He, at least he doesn't have the white gaps around the outsides. But I would like to probably paint the ends of his claws, paint them white so I can pick it up a lot better with this backdrop before I take a picture of that. Probably his teeth too. That looks like a, a thing to do to get it to be perfect. And then get a picture of it. And I'm thinking to use my... Oh, that GoPro knockoff. I can use that or else Tammy's cell phone. I think I can take a picture of it, transfer that to my Facebook from her phone, and then I can steal it and then use it on the printer. Pretty sure I can do that. It's a lot of jacking around because my, my uh, camera stopped working. I've had this camera for a great many years. I bought it because it was... Much like the red camera that I had, Samsung, and it's starting to, it's bleaching everything out when I'm not even using the flash. I take a picture and it bleaches the stuff out, but anyway, I bought that off of eBay about 10 years ago because my, my red one stopped working, my Samsung that I had. And since I had all the attachments and everything for it, I thought, well, I better stick with that brand because, yeah, because I didn't want to replace all that stuff. So it, it lasted quite a while. Let's see if I can go like that. 
Okay. I don't know if it's not leaned back right. There we go. Okay, guys. Um, I think that's about it. I had several things I had kind of going on. But, yeah. I think I can get that done and then get uh, lettering done for for that uh, ranchero get that finished up i gotta finish up the wheels i was done almost done cutting the back outers for the aluminum uh, out of uh, aluminum on my lathe to be able to use those and epoxy them in place i still got to turn the two outers for the front get them done and that's probably what i'll do with these i'll probably I don't know if you can now not see them. But the true spokes are probably epoxy, the three prong flippers on there. And get them on there because those are my favorite. I'm not a big fan of the two eared flippers. But in uh, Dayton's, I thought for sure I had that set of Dayton, gold Dayton's, but. I went through all my wheels and tires, and for some reason, they're, they're gone. But I, I don't think they were glued together very good. It was a glue bomb mess that I got off of eBay, and then I used the, the Chevy Impala, and I put those aside, and I can't find them. They must be in a model box or something else, but I'm not going to wait around or look through, look through anything else. I, I couldn't find them for lack of looking for them. But True Spoke, I love them on a Corvette, on a real uh, Corvette we had in the, in the body shop back in the late 80s. Came in and I made a set of covers for the nice chrome side pipes that came out. Um, they looked a lot like the ones I used on my, on my real car, my Mustang alien mustang that i've got a video of and the side pipes came out they wrapped around the header the headers did and then they went into a nice side pipe but those we had a customer come in he had the true spokes on there he had osemity sam airbrushed underneath his hood when you pop the hood open with all chromed out motor uh, he had a bunch of airbrush work done on the car and they wanted me to build side pipe covers where it looked like the side pipes went into a tunnel and then came out so that they bought a set of, of covers but they didn't fit they didn't fit the car i had to grind on the fiberglass and really make them work but yeah i was always doing fiberglass work at that particular body shop if a boat came in the transom is weak they had me do all of that fiberglass stuff and that was back in the late 80s. I'd, I'd have to say 1989. Yeah, so all of this is all coming along really super good. And I can't wait to start getting stuff all together, but it's it's a matter of behind-the-scenes kind of stuff now for a couple days anyway, I think. And that'll be it. Okay, guys, have a super great Monday, and I'll talk to you as soon as I can. Okay, bye-bye.